DevTech Media. Subscribe to DevTech Media. DevTech Media. Subscribe to DevTech Media. Talk to an average citizen. They will tell you that their life is difficult now than it was 10 years ago. Even just what it was six years ago. It's not a matter that we can debate. It's a matter that is settled, that citizens are distressed. Only a few that are in the ruling party, only a few that have access to public resources are the ones that can say their lives are better. This situation has not chosen, these difficulties have not chosen a particular ethnic group, neither is there only a particular province that is affected. We are all affected as ordinary citizens, as marketeers, as taxi drivers, as students. We are hurting in one way or another. And it's therefore important that the elections that are coming in the next couple of weeks must be seen in the right context. The elections coming must be seen not to be the UPND and partners elections, but they must be seen as elections, not for us in politics, not at all, but the elections are about you, the people of Zambia. It is about you, the citizens, and the difficulties that you're going through. This is a fight for survival by all of us, for all of us. I think it's important that we get things right from the outset. So, the choice is clear. The choice facing us now is very clear. To any ordinary citizen, any decent human being, the choice is clear. The choice is to choose to continue the way we are now, with all the challenges that we've talked about and more will be talked about today. So the status quo on one side and change on the other. There's nothing in between, absolutely nothing in between. So we believe that having agreed that we're all suffering and that the status quo will damage us even further, the only choice we have is for change, real change, not cosmetic, but real change. Let's articulate a little bit what the status quo would mean. If we were to continue with the situation as it is now, what would that mean? It would mean joblessness. That's what it would mean. It would mean hunger in our homes. And that will continue. It means no business opportunities for our smallest business, a marketeer selling in Soweto, in Chiplukusu market, in Kitwe, elsewhere. A marketeer, a widow with eight children who used to go to a market and sell after buying, ordering eight, ten boxes of tomato, twenty boxes of tomato, she can only sell now two boxes per day. Two, only two, because no one has the money to buy the boxes of tomatoes. That widowed woman will continue to suffer and fail to feed her children as a single mother, a widowed mother. That's what it means. It means that poverty will increase. It means that the corruption that you see amongst the few in government, in the PF government, let's be specific, will continue unabated. It means medicines in hospitals will continue being in short supply. Absolutely. If you find some medicine 
you will not be sure whether these are expired medicines or not. Most likely, they will be expired medicines. That will continue. Doctors, nurses will be in short supply. A patient crying on a bed or on the floor of the hospital waiting for a nurse to attend to her, to him, to the child, there is no nurse. There is no doctor. That's what it means. It means that the civil service will continue to work under the fear of the PF thugs, cadres, harassing them. That's what we're seeing. That's what it will mean. It will mean that for farmers like me, Ali Mianzanga, you will not be able to access fertilizer because it will continue being expensive. Mbeo, seed will continue being expensive. It means that when you grow your product, your produce, you will not be paid a decent price for you to make a profit on it. So you'll be farming as a charity. But farming is a business. It's not charity. It must be profitable for it to continue, for production continue to continue. Farming is a business. So the cost of production will continue being, or going up. Fuel will continue being expensive and running short when you need it most. To drive a patient, if you're lucky, you can hire a taxi. Taxi needs to drive a patient to hospital and there's no fuel. If the fuel is there, it's too expensive for you to afford it. That's what it means. It means the promise of lower taxes, which are now high taxes, it was the opposite that will continue. It means that the money you don't have in your pocket, which you were promised, will never come to your pocket, as it is going to only a few pockets. Pockets of those who are in the PF, pockets of those that are cutters. Only a small number in the PF. That's what it means. It means more Kongole, more loans, more Kaloba, which numbers we've never seen before. Which means that there will be no money left for development in this country. As it is now, we are even failing to service the debt. Tikangi wa kulipira nkongore, anzatu anatenga, nukudi andarama. They even came up with a saying that, ubo mba muibala, aria muibala. Nomba nembu toyonse, varisheta. That will continue. I don't think that's what you want as people of Zambia. That's on one hand. On the other hand, change, real change, brought in by the UPND and the alliance partners. Just a little bit of what that will mean. Just contrast what I've said and what I'm just about to say now. Change, real change, through a united Zambia will deliver better opportunities for our people, all of our people, not a small number, but all of our people. What does that mean? It means now we can have food, we can have affordable food, we can feed our children when we deliver change in this election. It means that jobs will be available. It means that businesses will be possible. It means that the cost of living will come down. Let me just draw one aspect that I've been hearing, and I'm sure my fellow presidents have been hearing of late, where guns have been hired to go on television to argue that the cost of living in Zambia is lower, is affordable than South Africa. What a joke. I looked at an individual on television who was explaining that the cost of millimil here is 150 kwacha. Only. Only. In South Africa, they gave a price that is equivalent to 300 or so kwacha. If you choose to go on public media, on television, to lecture, to ask the people of Zambia, you must understand that you must go there with clean hands. 
You can't compare the price of bread in South Africa and here based on simplicity thinking. Cover price is not the same as the real price. You must also look at the other side. The coin has two sides. You analyze the cover price here. Analyze the income side on the other side. An average civil servant here gets a salary of 6,000 kwat. Call it what you want. An average salary equivalent in South Africa gets 25,000, 30,000 kwacha. Compare runs, look at the exchange rate, and look at what we call, I don't want to be complicated today, I want to be simple so Zambians can understand, purchasing power parity. And I was watching at that individual, I said, how can you be so ignorant? Where are the goods we sell in Zambia coming from? They're coming from South Africa or from that Tanzania through the borders. You buy them there, a trader buys them there, brings them here and puts a profit. It means that the real value of that commodity here is more expensive than in Tanzania and in South Africa. Do you need to have gone to school to understand that? All you need is common sense. Please stop cheating people. I hear a particular doctor soon will be on television trying to justify that the cost of living is lower here than in neighboring countries. Please do not insult citizens. They are already stressed. Now, papata, do not insult the intelligence of Zambian citizens. The cost of living here is higher than in South Africa, in Tanzania, than in Botswana. Settled. That's a fact. That's a fact. Why are Zambians, that's another factor, why are Zambians going to South Africa looking for jobs and not South Africans coming to Zambia to look for jobs? You don't need to basic understanding of economics and finance. All you need is common sense. The other way is to look at it is that ask a citizen, do you have enough food now than you had before PF came into office? They will tell you the answer. So the best educated person to tell you whether Zambia is worse off now than before is an ordinary citizen. So you can't have gone to Russia to study economics and come and tell Zambian lies here. Say that to Dr. Shimunza. Go for a debate with him. Go for a debate with President Milopi, President Akafumba, and you settle that debate. Don't come on television and mock Zambians that the cost of living is higher, is lower in Zambia and higher in other countries. So we are saying the other side of change is that we will lower the cost of food, we will lower the cost of living, we will lower the cost of doing business. Fact. Yes, fact. Another individual challenged me and said, tell HH to lower the cost of beef. Absolutely. We will lower the cost of beef. Why is the cost of beef high now? It's because the cost of raising cattle is high. When we come in, we will lower the cost of deep, we will lower the cost of medicines, drugs, we will lower the cost of transportation through procuring diesel at a fair price, not through corruption. We will lower the cost of fertilizer to grow hay for the, for the beef. Having done that, we will lower the cost of beef. There is your answer, madam. You know the madam I'm talking about. There is your answer. Simple, straight. That's the choice Zambians have. That's the choice Zambians have. What else are they going to have on the other side? I have already said cheaper farming inputs, lower price fertilizer. That's the other side of change, real change. What else? NAPSA reforms will come which will allow citizens to access NAPSA savings midstream and they can use their savings to build houses, to start a business instead of borrowing money at a higher interest rate. How about that? That's what you are offered on the other side. What else? We will fight corruption. To benefit the people of Zambia, to protect public resources, we will fight corruption. Doctors, nurses will be available in hospitals. Hospitals will deliver an efficient health services system. 
with not expired medicines, but medicines that will not kill our people. That's a choice you have as citizens, a very clear choice. I don't think you can stand in the middle. That is a very, very clear choice. A clear choice where we will restore students' bursaries. We will restore students' meal allowances, which were withdrawn by someone who wants to be a vice president today or tomorrow. Remember that, students. Remember who withdrew your meal allowances. Who is denying you bursaries? It is those who want to say, that's the choice that we have. Students, this is your election. Farmers, this is your election. Marketeers, taxi drivers, this is your election. The media, the choice you have is to be brutalized all the day, all the time. But on the side of change, real change, you will cover events and exercise your profession without anyone brutalizing you, without party cutters brutalizing you. That's the choice you have. It's a clear choice you have to make, together with the rest of the people. Son. What else? I've talked about bursaries. Even for the poorest student, poor family, orphans, that bursary is waiting for you. That's a choice you have to make. I've talked about employment. It's a choice you have if you're a retiree, your retirement benefits will be paid on time. Not now where you wait until you die before you get your benefits. Students have suffered enough. But not just students. Lecturers have suffered enough. This is your election, lecturers. A doctor is asking for their allowances which are not paid, they are fired. This is your election. So your allowances can be paid. Public service, your conditions of service can be improved, will be improved. A professional civil service, not where you are retired in national interest, yet it's private interest for an individual or two to remain in public office. Freedom is coming for you. Freedom is coming for you and your families. Absolutely. Real change on the other side will end violence, community violence, political violence. That has now become normal. How can violence become normal? The Board of Christ, the Christian fraternity, the religious fraternity, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, you will have your freedoms to worship, freedom of worship. Many a time, You've been attacked in the church, worshipping. We haven't forgotten. This is what real change will bring for you. It's not a contest. It's a non-contest. It's an obvious choice that citizens have to make. Absolutely. Just imagine you are going to intercity. You want to catch a bus to Kitwe? You are identified to be UPND Alliance member of whatever you are. You don't support PF. You are attacked. You are hacked. You are beaten. Think about that. Think about the choice you have to be able to have the freedom of movement, freedom of assembly. How many times have people been tear gassed for assembly? exercising their constitutional rights. This change we're talking about as opposed to what is the status quo now will liberate you, will give you those freedoms that have been taken away from you by a small clique of greedy people 
who want to stay in office. Someone, I understand, went on, uh, some party members of another party went on a door-to-door -to, -door to campaign so that PF can return in office. And a woman in a particular compound said, oh, you want me to vote for PF? They said, yes. Why? They said, oh, roads. Look at bridges. She went into the kitchen, got a pot, and came back to those door-to-door -door campaigners from PF and said, look at my pot. It's empty. I haven't eaten. My children haven't eaten. Can you put a road in this port so I can eat and my children? Can you? You can't. So that woman and her children have a choice to make in the next 32 days. And that choice is change, real change. No contest. Absolutely no contest. With all that we've said about the choice, the status quo, to continue, Pampando Nampando Guribe now. Mpando Nyoba and Tubangon. And the opportunity we have on the other side through change, through the UPND and this alliance partners. We know that the PF are desperate to remain in power. Only they know what they want to continue doing in office. Only they know. Because the majority of Zambians have taken a decision that change must come and must come now. So, they are desperate. For them, political office is livelihood. Contrary to this group, political office is service. Not a livelihood. We know how to earn a livelihood. We know. You do a business. You do something. You get a job. So, they will try to rig the election to stay in office, but they will fail. You will not allow them to rig your election. They will fail. They will bring violence, continue with violence. Today, if you are an alliance member, UPND alliance member, you are putting a billboard, your billboard is torn. In your face, you are putting a, a poster, you are beaten to be killed, like Sinkala, who was putting billboards down this ring road. Hacked his leg, PFX. He was down already crying, please don't kill me, and he tries to cover himself so they don't hit him on the face. They cut his neck to chop his neck. You all saw the footage. They will continue with that. But we are saying that will not work too. Police protect citizens. That's what you are employed to do. Please, police, protect citizens. And I want to appeal to PF cutters. Stop your violence. They're taking it to Shiwangandu, Kampiongo. Taking it to Mporokoso, taking it across the country. Stop the violence. Zambians want food and jobs, not violence. Police protect citizens. And as citizens, as communities, when the police don't defend you, defend yourselves. That's the last resort you have. That's the constitutional right you have. Protect each other. Do not allow people to be maimed. Just hold on for another 32 days. Protect each other. It's no longer UPND alliance partners. As I said already, this is your election. This is your safety. This is your... You need to protect each other. You are in the majority. We are in the majority. The thugs are fewer. The corrupt are fewer. I will have a way to come up and do that. No, no. Mulabing, tulabing.
No violence. None of our members should start violence. But our members are being attacked, our supporters being attacked, ordinary citizens are being, being attacked every day. Police protect them. I'm repeating. It's your duty. These are your fellow citizens. They are your relatives. The last resort the community has is to defend yourselves. That's constitutional. Do not start violence. Your duty is to end the violence, to protect lives of a friend, a brother like Sinkar. But this violence will not work. Change is coming. We know that our men and women in uniform are watching. Protect your fellow citizens. Protect your constitution. We ask you. They are disregarding the COVID-19 minimum requirements. They are saying to us, true animal farm. UPND Alliance, don't campaign. No rallies for UPND Alliance, but they're having rallies. No road shows for UPND Alliance and opposition, but they're having rally. I mean road shows. We saw it in Mutendere a few days ago. Someone went in Mutendere. We've asked the Electoral Commission, what was that? They have not answered. So, they are willing to do anything, including infecting people with the coronavirus, as long as Babuirere Pampando. Leadership is for the people. It's not for ourselves. It's to save the people. Don't kill the people you want to save. Protect their lives. They have shut businesses, but they are campaigning. I am saying to our members, within the COVID guidelines, go out and campaign. Campaign smart. What is campaigning smart? Door to door. Smaller groups. Everybody is a campaigner. Everybody should be a campaigner for change, for real change, for better the opportunities we've talked about, even if it meant protecting yourselves and your children from violence. So you are all appointed from now on going once, including you journalists, as campaign managers for the UPND Alliance. Each one of you, each one of us, in your locality, in your work environment, after church, in the evening, in the homes, then they cannot stop us because they are not everywhere. So you are the campaign managers for change. Because we believe in the collective good of our country, we believe that Zambians deserve a better life for all of, all of you, all of, all of you. I'm speaking colloquial English deliberately. For all of Deliberately. For all of us. Everywhere, you deserve a better life. Because we are convinced that you are worth better, we are resolved in the alliance with all of you who wish to be on the right side of history, on the side of the people, as it has always been to deliver independence. You're on the side of the people, you delivered independence. The colonialists lost. You were on the side of the restoration of democracy in 1991. We won. So it shall be in 30 days from now. So we are determined to deliver change for a better life for all. Our men and women, who, who will manage this election? the Electoral Commission, the civil servants, all of those that will be recruited to manage the elections by the Electoral Commission. You carry the future of the 18 million Zambians on your shoulders. You have a duty, you have a responsibility to ensure a free, fair, credible election on the 12th of August. 
this year. Remind yourself, you are a presiding officer, you have been appointed to be one, you are an IT person in the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Remember, the choice is you want to continue with the problems that are there or you want better. You want better, deliver a free and fair election. Let this election be decided by voters, not by those who count votes. Shall I repeat that? Let this election be decided by voters, the Zambian voters, who have seen suffering like never before, to decide this election. Not those who will be asked to manage the election, transmitting results, moving ballot boxes, trying to change polling station result certificates. It will not work this time round. But first, the duty is yours to make sure that you allow citizens to choose the leadership that they believe will serve them and serve them better. And as it were, as it is, the UPND Alliance leadership. Because the only other competition has lamentably failed, which is the PF. Not to Landakar. So, take your duty seriously. Equally, citizens, take your power to decide on the, the leadership you want seriously. Don't allow anyone to rig or steal your vote. And it's a good do not allow someone, watch someone manipulating your results that will deliver a better life, cheaper food, education, if you're a student, bursary, meal allowance, and you allow them to steal your vote. Then you say, oh, why you playing the alliance? No, no, it is you who will have lost. Let's get that clear. Please. This is a defining moment in our history as a country. It's a liberation struggle for economic and social advancement. We have already said to our men and women in uniform, other civil servants, keep your eyes open, protect citizens, refuse to carry out illegal instructions to brutalize citizens. Now, into the election, after the election. These are your brothers and sisters. They are asking for an opportunity to have a better leadership that will allow you to be paid decent salaries and allowances and job protection, job security. For all, we don't seek public office to remove people from office, to remove marketeers from your market store as you are being scaremongered by PF. No, no, no. We seek the opposite, to secure your market store to give you credit in the market, cheaper credit, to give you a career in the public service, civil service, local government, and in the country as a whole, because the laws that we will put in place will protect all workers. Civil service, public, local government, private, because the laws will govern this country and everybody who does business in this country. I take the opportunity to mention some hoax that someone in the PF announced a few days ago. Debt swap. I see President Mutati there. He understands what a debt swap is. We understand what it is. Last minute, gush, rush to remain in office, the PF government is announcing that because civil servants are riddled in debt, now they are going to create a facility called a dead swap for workers. What a hoax. Let us lay bare this hoax. The first question is that, why are civil servants in debt? Who has put them in debt? Were they in debt like this under the MMD government? The answer is no. When did they get debt ridden? It's under the PF government. The question is that, why? How? Let's put it very kindly. 
Let's put it very simple. Who has created this crisis in the civil service? It is the PF who have been allowing lenders, lending institutions to lend to civil servants on a payroll basis. Lending based on a payroll. The government of the PF deducts the loan repayments from workers. They don't pass that money to the lenders. And the debt accumulates. The civil servants are having their money deducted. The PF government is not passing the money to the lenders. This is called theft. This is stealing public resources. This is called brutal, brutality. No love for the people. Don't care what happens to the house of that civil servant which they have built out of the money loan from the lending institution and the house is repossessed. Today you come in panic and announce that there will be a death swap. You are a criminal. You are a thief stealing from civil servants. But because you do not respect laws, you hide behind being a government. Now today you announce a death swap hoax. Civil servants do not take that serious. That's a way of duping you to keep those who want to wear a pampando in office. Give them this opportunity to continue. They will hammer you even more after August. And then you come to us and say, Alliance, help us. We are here to help you. That's why we are dismantling this hoax. This debt swap is not a solution. Let us give you the solution. The solution to the civil servants and other public sector workers, indeed other workers, coming out of the debt crisis is with us in the alliance. Few things. Just four measures that were put in place to resolve this crisis. Very simple, very straightforward. Number one, we will improve the pay and conditions of service for workers. When that is done, it means you have more disposable income. And when you need to borrow to buy 20 pockets of cement, you can buy the cement, having lowered the cost of cement, and we'll talk about it, from your salary, from your savings. You don't have to borrow to buy 20 pockets of cement per month, then you build your house over a year, debt free. There's a solution. Number two, we will reduce the cost of materials and the cost of food, which means that with your enhanced pay and conditions of service and the reduced cost of materials, you then have more income, more money, and you can support your projects without going to a lending institution. Easy, isn't it? But easy is not easy in the eyes of PF because they're mischievous. Number three, we talked about reforming NAPSA. We will reform NAPSA so you can access your NAPSA savings along the way. Again, you don't have to go to borrow money. You don't have to go to borrow caroba at unacceptable levels. You have your money. The money you saved yourselves. That is innovative. That is smart. That is love for the people who work in the sector. Number four, we will lower the interest rates. What are the interests today? You borrow it. We will lower those interest rates. A combination of just these four measures will give you more money to avoid that caloba and you will have done away with this hoax of a, a debt swap. That's smart, isn't it? Does PF understand that? No. They want to hook the workers, threaten the workers, so they can manipulate them. Not anymore. Light is here. Dawn is here. Not anymore. This is what this alliance wants to do amongst just a few things. 
to benefit you, the people of Zambia. But now, we have a new crisis, something that is challenging our ability to deliver what we've said. That something is deadly. That something has changed our lives. In order to restore normalcy in our lives, in order to allow the European D Alliance, once we form government, God's will, cut us of the people of Zambia, to do what we've said, to offer you a better life, better opportunities, we need to be able to bring under control the COVID-19 pandemic, which has distorted everything. Yes, we'll do all of these things and more, but without bringing the COVID pandemic under control, as it is now out of control, we cannot and we will not be able to deliver these opportunities for the people. And therefore, Zambia being in the midst of this wave now, deadly wave, deadly pandemic, which the PF is not managing well. We all know that. We have to address this as a priority. Now, and as we change government. This pandemic has taken our people, our brothers. We have lost a lot of lives, vibrant lives, to the pandemic, but largely because it's not being managed properly by the PF. At this stage, we say our thoughts, our prayers are with everybody that has been affected by this pandemic. Every family has been affected. Remember, we are one family as citizens of Zambia. We share an umbilical cord bloodlines, marriages, just even by God putting us together in this lovely country. We are one. So we are all affected. So our hearts, our thoughts, go to our communities, go to every family. Only last week, I buried a sister, first cousin who I brought up, sent her to school up to university, she left young children. I know you have lost somebody. So this is serious. This crisis is escalating, but the incompetence and the poor leadership of the PF has been reviewed yet again in the management of this pandemic. Clearly, leadership has failed. The PF leadership has failed us in the COVID fight. The COVID fight has been mismanaged from the beginning. Many Zambians, ordinary Zambians, made donations to the fight against COVID from all walks of life. But we know that this money has been misused. In some cases, it has been stolen. You can see it from those that were asked to manage the COVID funds, all of a sudden they looked affluent. They were driving new cars. They started new businesses. I know somebody. Who even started ranching. They thought ranching you can make money within two months. No. Patience. Time. Husbandry. Nursing. And immediately they were no longer in access to those funds. Those projects have died. You can actually say... This money was coming from the misuse of COVID funds. Simple. Donors gave us money. We have not used it properly. This UPND Alliance is ready to manage this pandemic better. In an organized manner. In a responsible manner. In a responsible manner. 
with proper planning. We're determined to do that. And the first thing that we'll start with to rein in this pandemic, to return lives to normal, businesses to normal, households to normal, markets to normal, is the UPND government, as we assume office, will declare the COVID pandemic a national disaster. And that has implications. Resource implications, resources being allocated properly, management, attention, all of those things. And here are the measures that we'll take, specific measures. Following the UPND Alliance assuming government immediately, we will implement a plan, a program to rein in on COVID, to bring this pandemic under control. Remember? So we can manage the economy, so we can look after the social side of our people. And we ask, before we read out our measures, we ask the PF to consider, even in the last 30 days they have, implementing some of these measures. Why? So we can save lives. We can save businesses. We can save our children and take them back into school. And when they go back to school, they'll be safe. They're not safe now. So, if you look at the interest of the PF, is putting billboards every five meters, go in Cairo Road. Look at the billboards there. Every five meters, there's a billboard. And we know that they never had money before they went into office. So we can say that that's taxpayers' money in those billboards. And they are busy tearing off our billboards. They are bringing down our billboards. We will bring down COVID ourselves. We will bring down the cost of living ourselves. There is a difference. Clear difference. No priorities. The good news is that as people pass through those billboards, they are actually insulting PF. So, Ndalama Zatwis is in Ndalama, then it must be used in fighting COVID and in making food affordable for us. We have seen this before, where governments would dress trees with chitenges and dress even animals with chitenges. But still you lose an election because you are not addressing the people's needs. So, having declared COVID as a national disaster, next we shall create the Office of the COVID-19 National Director dedicated to fight COVID under the President's office for political will, for seriousness. We will recruit qualified doctors, nurses, medical staff across the country. Any of the medical staff that are not in employment now, we will bring them in employment, recruit them, because they are needed to save lives, to improve health care for all our people. All those doctors, remember, not long ago, some doctors were asking to be paid their allowances. They were fired. <coughs> Here's a message to those doctors. Please prepare to return to office to work after 30 days from now. We'll bring you back. Pay your allowances. We'll bring you back. You trained to save lives. We need you now more than ever before. You committed no crime for asking for what was yours. We will incentivize and motivate all our medical personnel, including removing the payers you earn from their salaries, from their pay slips, for a period of time. Initially six months to one year, observe how the pand pandemic goes. Improve their conditions of service. Why, why do we want to do that? to secure their livelihoods and their children in their homes while they focus on life-saving activities in the hospitals. That's the reason. Good reason, isn't it? 
Peripherism. All medical staff will have personal protective equipment so that they are not infected by the pandemic in the execution of their duties, not what it is now where they're exposed. We will embark on making sure that oxygen is not in short supply. Some of our patients have died because of the absence of oxygen. There will be oxygen. We will incentivize oxygen production plants across the country. Where they are non-existent, we will avail resources. We will avail resources to make oxygen capacity available in all the provinces, in all the hospitals across the country. Can you imagine? No oxygen in the hospital, no cylinders, but ministers are driving expensive VXs. What sort of country is that? Where are the priorities? Bed spaces are overwhelmed right now. A patient goes to hospital, there's no bed space. Because the hospital is full, we will have to create bed spaces. Extra bed spaces will be created at what we shall call field hospitals, selected schools, auditoriums, tents erected in stadiums. Technology is there, products are there, very quickly, so that bed spaces are created for our patients. And the doctors and nurses are there, the oxygen is there. Vitamins, just vitamin C is there, will be there. Not expired, but that with efficacy. That's love. That's called love. That's called care. That's called service. We shall call for registration of volunteers. First, retired doctors, nurses, we shall call them out. And volunteers, we shall call them out. Of course, they'll be remunerated. They too will have personal protective equipment because they're in harm's way. We're going to ask our men and women in uniform, military, the army, to help in this national disaster. And they too will be taken care of in terms of conditions, allowances. We're not taking them out to die. We're taking them out to save lives. Therefore, they will have protected personal equipment. They will have better allowances, just like the medical staff. All of those will be involved in this operation. Dedicated operation. What else are we going to do? Working with communities, community leaders, traditional leaders, headmen, working with church leaders, working with political parties, and other leaders in our communities. We shall start a mass campaign to educate our citizens to dispel conspiracy theories about COVID-19, the testing, and the vaccinations. There is a lot of that out there. And that's why people in the first round of vaccinations did not want to take vaccinations. Let's work with the church. We're a Christian country. Let's work with the Muslims, the Hindus. Let's work with everybody to agree on what is correct by science. And once we agree that, we work together to educate our people so we can save their lives. That's our noble duty. We have to improve on the vaccinations. Current is chaotic. PF cadres are now rushing for the vaccines, grabbing the vaccines from ordinary citizens and are having special facilities where they're having vaccinations. Saving PF lives as though PF lives are more important than lives of ordinary citizens. As I'm speaking now, there are people in the queues. The queues are not moving. The drugs will run out quickly. Where have they gone? They've been grabbed by PF thugs and the PF leaders. Who said that when you are put in office, public office, your life is more important than the life of that person who voted for you?
or at least who you stole the vote from. This should not be allowed to continue. It will not be allowed to continue. Vaccines, testing must be available, masking to everybody. Everybody. Look at what we've done in, in vaccinations. So far, we've only done around 150,000 first doses. Less than 1% of the population will have done after the full vaccinations. This is nothing. It shows the lack of leadership that we talked about. In the face of death, there's no leadership. Zambians. Zambians, please. Do not allow your cousin to die unnecessarily because of bad leadership of the peer. You have a choice. We will engage with doctors more effectively in order for us to secure adequate vaccines, doses, and other support. Donors will be involved. Our own resources will be shifted from consumption areas, wasting money on corruption on roads, expensive roads. Build roads at a lower cost, true cost, savings from there, take it to COVID fight. More vaccines, more testing capacity, more masks. We want to see masks at all the entrances of markets like Soweto. There must be boxes of masks and young men and women who are properly protected will be giving out masks under the Alliance government. Because people can't even afford masks. The money is there. This will be the largest program of prevention, masking, testing, vaccinations. To those who are willing, the vaccinations will not be by force. We will have persuaded people working together with the church, as I said, and other leaders. The current chaos you see in the vaccinations will be over in the next 40 days. That will be over. You see order, you see fairness, you see seriousness in there. Not these jokes which are leading to the death of our people. The Department of Child Health at the Ministry of Health has traditionally been the one responsible for childhood immunizations. What does that mean? They have the experience. They will be made to lead the agency in the effort in controlling this, not the current Department of Infectious Diseases at UTH, because this will be in charge of treatment protocols. We should be able to vaccinate to protect every willing Zambian. Every citizen willing within 12 months of taking office. That means saving lives and gravitatively slowly retaining life to normal for commerce, for trade, for school, for hospitals, for farms, for any business to operate a factory freely. Those of you who liked soccer yesterday, there was a game between Italy and England. And if you looked at that stadium, there were no masks. The question is that, why were there no masks? Because they vaccinated most of their people. They protected most of their people. A few wore masks because they wanted additional protection. But the government there embarked on a program similar to what we're talking about. That's leadership. That's what's lacking today. You can't do all of this without a proper monitoring scheme to improve the efficiency of the program. There will be monitoring, proper monitoring, very, very serious monitoring to improve, close the gaps that will be there. This is the management we're talking about, which is lacking at the moment. In the medium term, we shall invest also in the production of personal protective, protective equipment to improve health, health care delivery, health service delivery. By the way, what COVID has done, now even those who are banking to travel to India, to America for medication, those in PF who acquired a lot of stolen money cannot be allowed to fly there. Now you are suffering together with us. So we have to improve the hospitals. In 
I was trained in a different way. Where there's a problem, on one hand, where there's a risk, flip the coin, there's an opportunity on the other. The opportunity that comes with this crisis is that we can improve, and we will improve our medical health service delivery. Simple, straight. Quarantine will be implemented. People traveling our borders, enter this country, flying, whatever means, they enter the country, no quarantine. No, nothing. It is individual. You want to quarantine yourself or you don't. How can a government operate like that? We shall ensure and enforce the quarantine. You land at Lusaka Airport, you're coming from another country, you go in quarantine as the science dictates, as the doctors dictate, so that we stop importing variants that are deadly and compound the problem. What does it take to quarantine travelers? Not much. Why is it not happening? No leadership. That's why we need change. There's no question that the PF government, like in many areas, they've lamentably failed in managing COVID. We are asking you, pick some of these measures we are outlining. Pick them now. Alter your priorities now if you love the people of Zambia. Don't just ask them to vote for you. Protect their lives. I want to say to my beloved fellow citizens, countrymen, women, you have been through a lot, a lot of trauma under the PF poor leadership. You have endured the pandemic, you have lost many loved ones, but you have kept your spirits high. What a people. I can assure you that the leadership that you deserve, the leadership that to attend to your needs is certainly before us, just in front of us. Let's take it. I call on you Zambians to embrace our plan against this pandemic. It's the best way that we can win the battle against this deadly virus. The new Delta variant is aggressive easily transmittable, it's killing people, it's killing people, too many of our people, too many of our people. We believe that with the right measures and the right leadership, we shall prevail, no question about it. Together, we are strong, we are capable people. We've demonstrated this in the past. Let us remain disciplined positive and united in our desire to protect lives, in our quest to make this country better for everybody. I know, we know, as a team, we shall overcome, but only with a change of government soon, which will bring a change of leadership. A leadership which has a dual purpose. One is to reunite our country, divided by PF. Two, to reconstruct, to rebuild our country's economy and our country's social fabric. So we can look after the young, the sick, the old, the retired, those that live with disabilities. That's our duty. But we can only do that by running a viable economy, which comes with it jobs, health, education, for everybody. That's where we started this conversation from. I think it's right for me to say, God bless you all. God bless our mother Zambia. We love you. And I thank you.
He did the subject. I think he did the subject. And my colleagues can also answer questions if it's necessary, but within the subject. Through you, sir. We'll take a few questions within what has already been discussed. Bearing in mind that we have a limited amount of time. Just please state uh, which media house you're coming from. Pose your question. And move to the next. Thank you. Mwembera manyas. Limbi na mufu. Mutwile. Mwatele. Happy to tell you question. Then if there are no questions, sir. Perfect. Thank you for for listening. And please help the people of Zambia disseminate this message. Thank you. DevTech Media. Subscribe to DevTech Media. DevTech Media. Subscribe to DevTech Media. Thank you very much for tuning in at DevTech Media. Remember, DevTech Media is the media that shares news, trending videos, political news, gospel music, as well as entertainment. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and that notification bell to be the very first person to receive the video and that will be produced and posted by DevTech Media. DevTech Media, updating you.